Hey guys and welcome back. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Rianne. For today's video, I'm going to be doing a chatty kind of Q&A get ready with me. So I'm not going to be going into the products I'm using. They will be linked down below. And I'm going to be taking your questions from Instagram. So if you asked a question, it may be in here. Let's roll the intro. Okay, well, first of all, the amount of spam that I get every time I put a questions box on Instagram stories is really irritating. If you are using that as part of your social media strategy to use bots, please stop. That is a really easy way to get random people that have never heard of you to block you and report you for spam. So please, please stop. Okay, question number one. Do you color your hair? If so, do you have any vegan hair dye recommendations? I do not. I haven't colored my hair in many years now. The entire length of my hair is virgin hair. So I don't really know much about vegan dyes, especially not natural color vegan dyes. I feel like there's a lot more options for like fun colors. Say you wanted my hair color, for example, I don't know where you would go to get that. So if you guys have any recommendations, vegan and cruelty-free hair dyes, leave them in the comments. The next question is, do you have any thoughts on executive dysfunction? I've been seeing it on Pinterest lately. So I'm assuming this is someone who's looking up content related to ADHD. Executive function is kind of like a series of, I'm gonna put the actual clinical maybe meaning on the screen so you can read it, but it's a kind of series of abilities you may have in your brain to organize um, thoughts, tasks, stuff like that, um, which a lot of that is either missing or very hard to control when you have ADHD. It's a big part of it. My thoughts on it are, I don't know, to be honest, it's kind of just like a part of the condition. Um, it's definitely something I struggled with and probably one of the reasons why I picked up so many organizational things along the way is because I struggled so hard and wanted so hard to fix it. That's why I have planners, I set reminders, I have another calendar, I have another planner, I have a journal. It's a very real thing. Um, if you are someone who is kind of like not really believing in ADHD or you know think a lot of it's made up or things that people can control, I promise you it's not. Struggling with these things is not enjoyable or easy and it means, especially if you're undiagnosed, you're raised thinking that you are very bad or incapable of something that everybody else can do, but it's just not something your brain is um, naturally very capable of or, or even maybe just capable of in general. Executive function, series of skills or... I feel like it's deeper than just being a skill, it's like an actual mental ability that kind of help you go along with life as it's already been designed by society. That's why a lot of ADHD people uh, probably are late. There might be a bit more artistic versus more maybe sciencey or uh, mathematical based. There are people with ADHD that are great at those things, but I do think that is why we tend to more so go towards creativity because there's no defined kind of um, structures related to it. It's a bit more free and um, it's not something that you have to go along with someone else's timeline on so much. Um, yeah. I'm also seeing lots of questions wanting tips to be more productive during quarantine, how to get out of a slump, how to get the momentum of your like work productivity going. I don't think you're gonna like what I'm about to say. I don't think you can fix those things right now. Um, there is something going around online about how you're not just working from home, you're trying to work from home during a global pandemic highly stressful times. I think to expect that you're gonna be able to produce on the same level as you may normally be able to is only gonna make you feel worse. I know obviously people who don't work from themselves may have different deadlines and they're not able to take time off or maybe be as gentle with themselves, but I think you still kinda of gotta try. So that would be my number one tip, is to change your mindset to stop expecting from yourself that you're gonna be able to um, magically be the best at dealing with this kind of stress because it's not something any of us have ever dealt with before or anyone is really good at. That said, I did do a video not that long ago on some kind of organizational things I've been trying to use uh, to at least kind of stay on top of things at a manageable level. So I will link that video for you. Yeah, other than that, I would say you really gotta adapt your expectations of yourself. Be a bit kinder to yourself. If you have a day where you're just not really capable of anything, well then that's that's what's happened and maybe tomorrow will be better. Maybe next week will be better. For me during lockdown, I had a 
much harder time right at the beginning. Um, I felt kind of like stuck or, you know, paralyzed by fear, I guess. Most of my family are still in the UK and uh, a bunch of them were sick right when all of this happened. And so uh, I had a lot of anxiety related to that. Everyone's thankfully, knock on wood, okay now. Yeah, anyway, what I'm trying to say is that during that time I got next to nothing done. And again, I'm very lucky to be able to work for myself and to be able to have those times where I'm maybe not as productive, not accomplishing as much, but I would more than anything, what I wanna convey is to not be awful to yourself on top of that. Everyone's gonna deal with this differently. Some people are gonna throw themselves into work. Some people are gonna be not be able to work at all. And some people are gonna be up and down all over the place like myself. So yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have the answer. Um, it's a weird time. Oh, this is an interesting one. So what was something you really had to get used to or didn't understand about American culture when you first moved to the States? A couple things I found extremely bizarre. One was like TV related. Um, getting used to there being like health insurance commercials and commercials about medications is, is still to me so bizarre because I would never have dreamed of going to the doctor in the UK and being like, hey, I saw this medication. I'm curious about it. Can we give it a go? I feel like they would laugh at you and be like, I'm the doctor here. I'll probably suggest to you what you should be on. So even, t I'm not saying that you just go to the doctor here and ask for medication, but just the fact that it's advertised on TV to the consumer and not to the doctor who, you know, that's who I'm used to making those kind of decisions uh, on things. It's just weird to me. Uh, the other thing is like um, health insurance commercials. Because again, in the UK, you don't have to worry about health insurance. It's, you know, socialized healthcare. I mean, I guess the healthcare differences in general to me, to this day, are still bizarre. I remember first moving here and being like, what? So even if it's not your fault, you still have to pay for your treatment. And everyone's like, yes. And having to pay for an ambulance. Mm. If you're going somewhere in an ambulance, you're probably not in any position to be worrying about the cost of it. That's still, I mean, I could do a whole video on this. I probably won't, but yeah, the healthcare differences. Ooh, a kind of like verbal one I guess I found weird was um, when I first moved, people would say, oh, you should do this or you should try this. At that point, I don't think that was something commonly said in England was maybe you would be talking about something and someone would be like, oh, you should try this instead. Because to me, when I first heard that, I was like, why are you telling me what I should be doing? I think more in England people would, it would be, said more as a suggestion. And I do think that is what people are trying to say here, but just to hear someone say, you should, I don't know. Do I just not like being told what to do? I think that's the thing though. I don't think that, at least at that point, people in England weren't saying you should do this or you should try this. So yeah, that would be another one. What else? One thing that took a long time to get used to was people, oh my, maybe this is because I live in a small town, but, Say we were going out and I would ask for water, without doubt it would become a thing with the server. It would be like, what did you say? Are you from, not from here? Say it again. And it would be like, I'm not a performing monkey, you know? So that was weird. Um, people kind of like being really into English things all of a sudden or people, oh, people thinking that you're from London. I'm not from London. I'm from the other side of the country, right by Wales. So. I'm not from London. What else? Was this even the question or am I just bitching at this point? This one made me think of Joe Exotic. What exotic animal would you adopt if you could? Um, I wouldn't adopt any, no. I don't think I would adopt any of them. Which, like I said, makes me think of Tiger King. And I, don't get me wrong, I thought that it was hilarious and sad and awful at a lot of different points. Like, it was just a lot, like, weird that it's real life. But I do think what a lot of people missed between all those like really quotable, memorable moments was like how awful all those people were to animals. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. I think because it was kind of comedic in some places and just had a lot of other things going on that to some extent, um, people missed out on the fact that there was a lot of, you know, animal cruelty going on there. 
and probably illegal things, <laughs> you know. But yeah, I don't have any want to adopt anything. There's nothing that I really have like a obsession with or it's like my favorite exotic animal or anything. I think I would rather, you know, maybe see those things in the wild someday or go to a sanctuary, maybe in their native country and um, support that instead. Not not a Tiger King style sanctuary, but like an actual um, one where, you know, maybe the animals have been rescued from poachers or circuses or whatever. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have that interest in owning one. Oh boy, any plans for a new tattoo once life reopens? I'm getting the phases of the moon down my calf. Um, no. And I, and I don't envy you for going to get a tattoo because the last thing I want to do right now is, is go and be in pain. Obviously I started getting tattooed very young and I think when you're younger, you almost like have a different relationship with pain. I think you get more aches and pains as you're older that you're more tolerant of, but I think when you're younger, if you really want something bad enough, you're just like, this doesn't hurt, everything's fine. So now, when was the last time we got tattooed? Maybe a couple years ago? I don't enjoy it. There's nothing enjoyable to me anymore about being in pain. Yes, I like the finished result, but no, I don't. No interest in another tattoo right now. Okay, there's a few questions about how to deal with breakouts as a result of wearing a mask. Um, I'm assuming for most of your day, depending on where you work. This is gonna be a whole new area of like beauty and skincare, isn't it? I think for me, I would just be very, very careful about doing my kind of end of day um, skincare, uh, cleansing very well, and uh, honestly, probably not really bothering much with makeup. If you are getting um, breakouts specifically, I would try and include some kind of salicylic product in your routine if you're able to, if you tolerate that. Paula's Choice have a really nice one I've been using for years now. I know there are some oil blotting sheets that I have from My Couture and I think there's some that have um, kind of like treatment in the sheet. So maybe if you are taking your mask off like at lunch to eat, you could kind of like use those to blot the area, remove any oil or dirt with the sheet, and then it's also going to be treatment as well. I guess the other thing would be using some kind of spot treatment in a, maybe in a spray bottle, but so don't want to dry your skin out too much. <sighs> Honestly, I think it's just gonna be something that we're all gonna have to adjust to. Luckily, I don't have to wear one, obviously working from home, but whenever we're going out, I definitely have one on. And I make sure not to really put a whole lot of makeup in that area, uh, if any. Yeah, if you guys have any recommendations, obviously leave them below, that goes for any of the stuff we're talking about. But I would say just be very consistent with your skincare and maybe add in something for breakouts. I've also had some questions about stress breakouts. <laughs> I don't have the answer, but when I figure that out, I'll let you know and you, you guys let me know. Um, I did have much worse skin when I was having gut issues. It wasn't awful in the grand scheme of things, but for me and my skin, it was like a big difference. I had just constant breakouts and blocked pores and irritation. And once I kind of figured out my gastro stuff was when that went away. So I, again, Unfortunately, I think it's one of those things where you can't expect your body to be dealing with stress really well. There's obviously things you can do to negate it, which are the obvious, you know, meditation, uh, trying to go for walks if you're able to, all of those normal self-care things. But I also think you're going to have to just sort of accept it a little bit. We're all going to have a lot of weird stress-related issues for a while to come, I think, so... I wish I had the answer. Why didn't I bring myself any water down here? I guess this would be another tip if you are wearing makeup under a mask. Bake the area. Apply less product to start with. Bake the area. Setting spray. Uh, yeah. Weird times. Oh, I have setting powder in my lungs. 
just along I've been thinking about this a lot lately that's why I wanted to bring up along the lines of adjusting your expectations for things going on right now one thing that has been helping me is not paying attention to the dates that we are getting for like when lockdown is going to be downgrading or over um, because I they've been changed so much I just for me at least I may as well not listen to them at all just kind of make peace with being in lockdown right now and uh, just see when it actually is over. Um, the other thing is I think even if lockdown is over, which I know in some places it's been downgraded or cancelled, um, I think that if we all do that um, and everybody is just like out back to normal, whatever that's going to be, um, I think we are going to probably end up having like another lockdown or we're going to lose the end of summer or we're going to lose uh, fall. So for me, I'm just trying not to think too much about uh, exactly when it's going to be over because I that's so uncertain and that's why I'm not listening to any of the dates announced. Um, I was meant to be in England right now um, and I've not rescheduled that at all um even my mom is like i want you to be home but i she doesn't want me to be in danger or do anything i'm not comfortable with so yeah that's something i'm trying to do is not set my sights on it being over at this time because i don't believe that it will and even if it is i think we're gonna get thrown back in um and there's gonna be like a second big wave like the um what was it like the 1918 flu or whatever depressing uh <laughs> Okay, so many questions, like I said, about like staying productive, sleep routine, uh, how to deal with stress, handling life, feeling mentally clouded. I mean, I think that's what we're all trying to do, right? I don't think there is a set answer. Like I said, obviously I was able to, and this isn't gonna be the same for everyone, but when I was having the especially hard time and wasn't really able to create or just like be a, a human, um, I kind of had to make myself just embrace it and and ride it out because the more I tried to fix it or get out of it, the more frustrated I would get and the worse I would feel. So I think it's going to be the same for a lot of people is accepting what it's like right now. Maybe your sleep schedule is off. Um, maybe you're eating differently to you normal, how you normally would and you're beating yourself up about that too. Well, I just think that that's going to be our normal for a while and... <sighs> kind of accepting it a little bit is for me at least gonna make it easier in the long run versus beating myself up and trying to hold myself to the standards of normal life when this isn't normal life like I said I know I am very lucky to work for myself and be in a really good position to do this um, but I do just want to make clear that if you are able to take time to feel the feels and be a bit kinder to yourself and not be as productive then I would highly recommend doing that. Sorry, I don't know when that stopped recording, uh, but I was basically just blathering on about taking time for yourself if you're able to um, and acknowledging that there are a lot of essential workers out there not being paid very well and uh, not being able to take that time and I think that that's really messed up. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and link you to my kind of mental health and well-being playlist because a lot of what I'm saying I've already bored you with before but if you haven't seen those videos or you need a refresher I will link you to the playlist talk about all kinds of things related to kind of well well-being related to a sleep cycle though um, I know just saying to sleep whenever your body wants to is like not the most helpful thing one thing I do is um, I play Animal Crossing right when I wake up and it makes me feel kind of excited <laughs> to get out of bed. Um, maybe that sounds crazy to some people but if you've played Animal Crossing I think you will know what I mean that it right now it's kind of like a little therapeutic isn't it so um, maybe giving yourself the one thing that you really like first thing in the morning will help get you out of bed but you might just have to set a a lot of time that you're gonna do that for so you kind of still you know do the other things you need to do that day okay let's move away from stress related although this might be stress related uh, best eye cream for dark circles I to my knowledge I'm not a specialist but I will link you to some skincare experts that I follow um, I don't think that necessarily a 
eye cream is going to get rid of dark circles. I think it's either going to be lifestyle changes like more sleep, uh, maybe better nutrition, being hydrated. Uh, those things might help a bit, um, but I don't think that an eye cream necessarily is going to do anything but improve the eye, the health of the skin around your eye. It's not going to get rid of the darkness beneath the skin. But a couple of my favorite eye creams, I will link you down below, but there's one from 4th Ray that I really like, which I think has, has squalane and maybe hyaluronic acid in it. It's really nice, super affordable. A more expensive one that I really like is the One Love Organics Eye Balm. If you have any kind of, uh, I had seborrheic dermatitis on my eyelids that was very inflamed and sore and I used that to help get rid of it along with a very low dose steroid cream. Um, it's a really good product for that if you have like flaky or dry uh, skin around the eyes. What do you suggest when trying to switch to more eco-friendly, reusable or sustainable products? I get so overwhelmed with what to start with first and then I find myself making no switches at all. And then comes the guilt with not doing every Thing at once any tips would be very much appreciated I did talk about this a little bit on the vegan view so I will link you that video but it was more related to veganism but the same applies I think the best thing you can do in this situation is to uh, know that you can't do it all at once not to get rid of all of your products and replace them because that kind of defeats the whole purpose of being more eco-friendly or using reusable things I think the best thing you can do is as you use something up it's like pick a random example maybe you use up the rest of your ziploc bags and then you're slowly going to introduce um stasher bags or something like that uh, i think that is the perfect way to move into it in that area and that's basically what we did uh, when moving into reusables is right when we we're getting to the end of something i might pick up a stasher bag and then pick up a couple more as we got to the end of our ziplocs and then just didn't buy any more that would be my number one tip Work things in slowly, use up what you already have, and I think even introducing things slightly before you've used them up is a good way to kind of compare them and make sure you're happy with that product. And again, don't beat yourself up about it. Like, you're trying your best, you're doing something, um, you're doing something, and I think you should feel good about that. So, although maybe you feel from the internet that you got to be doing it perfect and that you're going to get told off if you don't, well... You're just going to have to do it in a way that suits you, in a way that works for you long term. Uh, which for most people, I would think, is going to be doing it in a manageable way that you can stick to. Not, like you said, getting overwhelmed about doing everything and then not doing anything. So, favorite deodorant, shampoo, and conditioner brands. For deodorants, I love Kaya Naturals. They also have a charcoal soap that you can use alongside it, right, for when you're kind of getting into using more natural deodorants kind of helps with the transition. I also like Lush, I think it's called Aromaco maybe. Um, that one does smell a bit like patchouli. <coughs> so that might be a bit of a transition if you're not really used to like super crunchy granola things. Uh, but that is another nice deodorant. Um, and then, what's the other one I had in like a... Get it in a kinder beauty box again i will link all these below for you and any discounts i can find but that would be it for deodorant and then for shampoo and conditioner i really use lush bars solid shampoos and stuff which um i showed you in a recent igtv video if you want to check that out i will link you i need to go and get a drink of water i was about to ask you guys do you want anything <laughs> i'll be right back okay that's better Next question. Can you talk about your house? It's beautiful. Thank you. Um, I remember you saying you guys built or modeled it, remodeled it. I need a sharpener. Hang on. Okay, so when we bought our house, it was like a half log cabin, um, which there, there was just a lot of wood involved and it's, you know, it's like raw, not finished. So it collects dust. It was in the kitchen too, so you would get grease on the raw wood and then dust and... Um, I mean, it was a lovely home, a uh, lovely, like, family home. And I do think even for, you know, like, a cabin or something that you just visited occasionally, it would have been great, but it just wasn't really our tastes. Um, but we bought it because the location is so great. It's right on the lake. And we had kind of thought, well, we'll live in it for a bit and then maybe we'll just add on or kind of change the finishes inside. I'm out of breath from walking up the stairs. Jeez. And when the time came to kind of add on or update some things, we realized that it was 
mm, not structurally sound. We have a peak of windows in the front of the house now, which was the same shape, size, dimensions, everything, but you could push on that and the walls would move. We kind of ummed and ahed about adding on and we would have to fix this and this was would need to be like structured differently and we decided, or we really weren't left with another option, but <laughs> having to basically take it down to the ground and just work from the foundations and add on from there. So we did just have the intentions of you know, renovating and updating a bit, probably keeping the wood on the outside, but the inside we would have um, just made a bit more modern and less woody, uh, but that didn't work out. So as with any house renovations, it didn't really go to plan, but it worked out for the best. We love our house now. It is beautifully built. Um, the company that built it is local, and I think originally they were like cabinet makers um, and very meticulous and uh, proud of their work and they kind of apply the same craftsmanship to whole home builds. They do such They do incredible work. Adam was the one that did most of the designing on a bigger scale I guess and then once we had the room set up how we wanted then I got a bit more involved in the finishes and things like that so um, What we had done prior to that is kind of when we stayed in a hotel maybe or saw it in a magazine uh, We would take pictures and collect images of things we really liked and then from there that helped us pick finishes we liked so like the slate um, the like dark ish cherry wood and then we just went with white walls but it really did help us narrow down the materials we wanted to use at least and then we use that throughout the house so there is kind of that common theme and then um we have slightly different furnishings and stuff throughout but it still is like fairly it's kind of like modern there's a little bit of mid-century modern and kind of like scandinavian modern i guess so yeah there's the story uh we just wanted to add on kind of update it a bit that was not possible because the house was falling down and uh, we ended up where we are now, which I love. I also like that our house is so simple, um, like walls and finishes and stuff, that if we did in another 10 years have completely different tastes, we could quite easily adapt it furniture-wise or smaller finishes to give it a different feel. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Someone said, how's your museum coming along? I'm guessing they mean about um, Animal Crossing. I only have like, Two, three. I think I have three pieces of art. I wish that red would come more often, you know? But I haven't had any fakes yet because I spend a long time staring at it, comparing it to the original. Then I think I only have two more fossils to get, which I've been stuck on for forever now. I'm sure there's still some more bugs and fish I need. I haven't been fishing much lately. <laughs> Weird thing to say. I do want to do like an island tour, but because I only have the switch light you can't screen record so I'd literally have to film the screen with my phone which maybe I'll just do that it won't be as good quality but as long as I can set it up with not too much light reflecting I should be able to do that for you guys if you're interested someone said now the sun hath returned <laughs> can you please talk a little about sun care I know you love to crave one but are there other good options too there, I mean, there are other good options. Again, I will try and link you some down below, but for me, the Crave SPF is the best that I've ever used. Um, whether I use it with no makeup, under makeup, it just works well. It doesn't leave a super white cast. It doesn't leave my skin feeling oily or gritty. It's just f phenomenal. I will try and link you to some others. And then I can't think what I've been using. Maybe it was like a Kiss My Face body SPF before, but I actually want to pick up a good body lotion one this year. I just think that the aerosol ones are kind of wasteful because you lose half of it in the air, even if you're like spraying it direct, you know? It's still my favorite face one, I'm sorry. Plant advice for newbies, please. There's a couple of plant ones that are like how not to kill plants. Still something I'm trying to figure out, my friend. Um, I am not an expert. Something I would recommend is buying a plant for the space in your house that you have in mind, not buying a plant and then trying to figure out where to put it. Um, actually put in the kind of thought into it first to make sure that it's actually going to work in the space. Otherwise, I think sometimes you get plants and you're like, I don't have anywhere in my house that has this kind of light that they prefer. So although they might do okay, they're probably not going to like flourish. I'm sure there's some exceptions to this, but overall, I think the best thing you can do is to leave them alone a bit. Um, <laughs> Overwatering plants, I think, is probably one of the worst things to do because you can get fungus gnats, you can get like root rot, it's just not good. So I always err on the side of 
um, being a bit dry. Uh, and I'll stick my finger into the, like the first or second knuckle if it feels dry then I'll water it thoroughly like water coming out of the bottom of the drainage holes thoroughly and for me that seems to work pretty well there was a lot of plants that I had that maybe didn't seem to be doing very well or were a bit brown and I think the light is another huge thing um, we're very lucky in our house we have a lot of indirect bright light which most plants like um, maybe there's some succulents and stuff that like direct scorching sunlight and that yeah that did help a lot of the plants I was having issues with would, was finding them a really good sunny spot for their needs so yeah I guess that would be it would be to buy the plant for the space not try and find the space for the plant you've just bought and uh, not over watering usually going a bit drier and then making sure that the light requirements are as good as you can provide them and just not buying difficult plants to start with too like a fiddly fig, which I don't want to talk about. Could you talk about your poor word recall? I have that and I wanted to know how you improve it and your experiences. My experience is that you don't improve it. I'm sure there's some like brain games you can try and play, but for me, I just think it's always going to be something I have. I used to like get really like embarrassed if I couldn't think of the word and now I just don't care because in the grand scheme of things, what does it matter? Does it say anything about me that I can't remember the word? No, it just means I can't remember the word. So I think I've had this since I was a kid. I always would get the names for things wrong, but I would just say the name that came to mind. And I still do that. Like I used to use potato and mushroom interchangeably, the same with gold and silver. I used to call like America round. What do you call that in America? Roundup? No. Here, here I go. Um, merry go rounds and roundabouts I used to use interchangeably as well. And even now, there's some like food things. Enchiladas, I always mix up with what's the Italian? <sighs> Cannelloni. Sometimes I'll say like, what's that Italian enchilada thing? And then Adam will be like, cannelloni. Is that, am I using the right words? Hmm, who could know? So yeah, maybe there's some like brain training things you can do, but overall I think just accepting that it's a part of you and sometimes you forget the word is uh, maybe the best bet because it's just a word. You just forgot it, you know? I feel like most answers I've given in this video are about like self-acceptance and not being mean to yourself, but it, it always applies. I do think it has like a technical, maybe medical term. Um, I don't have it super bad by any means, but it is something that I feel like I deal with on a pretty consistent basis. I, I know this is shit, but I've been so tempted to go out, obviously not to anything like the beach or dinner or anything, but like to get takeout or go shopping for home decor. How do you keep yourself at home I know it wouldn't necessarily be the same because you seem to live more rural and have the most incredible home, thank you. But my mental health and me being a super social person is making this isolation so hard to do. Um, I mean, you can go out and get takeout, can't you? I think that's okay. Anything that you're gonna go out and do, I think, like you said, don't be going out and doing like frivolous things, you don't really need to. But if you want to go out and get takeout um, or drive through or whatever, just make sure you're using precautions sounds like you're having like unprotected sex wear gloves wear a mask when you go out use a lot of hand sanitizer i don't really know what the rules are as far as like maybe if you went and did something outdoors with a friend if you kept um your distance i don't know obviously check this maybe give it a google but could you go on a hike with a friend if you stayed far away uh, like you said mental health is a huge thing for a lot of people and i don't want anyone to like get to a horrific point in their mental health um, but at the same time there are obviously things we need to stick to and to protect um, vulnerable people from so the other thing I would really recommend is utilizing some of the online things like online hangouts um, I've seen some people play like basically like a pub quiz online and things like that just to get your little social fix you know um, do a lot of things like that, FaceTime. As for the takeout, I think getting takeout is okay as long as you feel comfortable with it. And I really don't wanna try and minimize anything or say that it doesn't matter, it absolutely does. I have maybe left the house three times to actually go into town and get things since lockdown. So I am 100% taking it seriously. I think you should too. 
but I do think there are things that you can safely do at this point or have minimal risk so yeah I also think it's very important to support small businesses right now if you can um, so like getting takeout or getting a gift card to use when lockdown is over I think really helps those businesses. I guess also it's going to depend by state, isn't it? Because everyone is doing different things. It's what you're allowed to do. <laughs> Wouldn't guidance be great? Oh, this is another stress one. How do you... Tips with <sighs> handling stress. I currently have stress for my sick dog and work. Recently got gastritis too from all of this stress and while they say to relax, I don't know how to do that and keep my work and home life going. Also, favourite gastritis meals would be helpful. Hope you're feeling better and doing well. Thank you and I'm sorry that you're going through all of that. Related to your gastritis, if you're able to, I would consult with your doctor to see if they think it's worth doing a course of PPIs. Um, you can Google that um, as well. Uh, I don't think that like gastritis or, you know, reflux or heartburn things are something that you just want to leave indefinitely so obviously make those diet changes i do have a post on my instagram grid i think the first image is a cocktail which was actually kombucha um and then i did put a few meal ideas on that uh, carousel if you want to check that out so definitely taking that seriously if you need to take medication take the medication and uh adjust your diet pet stress is hard like you said that your dog is sick and work um if you're able to ask for help from anybody or just talk with a friend or, um, you know, get reassurance from your vet, perhaps. I mean, there's never a straight answer of how to deal with stress, right? Because it's like self-care things and you have to try a million before you find one that works and you're also really not in the mood to be doing any of those things. Uh, but right now, it's not like anyone has an answer as to when this situational stressful thing is going to be over. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I wish I had something more to suggest, but like I said, if you guys want to leave tips, please do. <laughs> Someone said thoughts on the recent UFO stuff. What can I say? It is what it is. I think we'd have been a bit foolish to think that there wasn't some other kind of life out there all this time. Um, they're probably horrified, to be honest. I don't think I ever thought that it wouldn't be the case. But if, if those aliens are watching this, I'm sure they watch YouTube makeup tutorials, um, help, please. Tips for growing Instagram following. There are all of the obvious things I can tell you, like using hashtags, responding to comments, uh, working with brands, tagging brands when you use their products. And although having a bigger following or X number of followers helps you, I don't personally find that a helpful thing to focus on or to put effort into. Um, I think most of the time when people start to try and make this their job or, you know, utilize it to supplement their income, they already have somewhat of a following. And I think often when you're in the pursuit of like X number of followers, you forget the ones that are already following you and you're not going to have any kind of audience retention then. Um, so I would, instead of focusing on gaining more followers, focus on the ones you have. What do they want to see? They're interested in a reason. There are going to be more people who are interested for those same reasons. So I would instead put some effort into that. Speak to the people that follow you. Ask them what they want to see. Um, if that aligns with what you want to make, do that. And then, you know, at the same time, be using good hashtags, doing all of those things, but I just wouldn't focus on that because I think you're gonna waste so much time focusing on the numbers that your content is gonna lack uh, as a result. I guess on that note, not saying that this is the case for this person, but often now when you see people just getting into maybe trying to make revenue from their social media, I do think that people get caught up in the numbers and not what they actually have to offer. I think your first priority should always be the content that you're providing people, uh, whatever it's gonna end up being. It's different for everybody, but that should be your main focus um, as well as interacting with people you already talk to. Because if, if you just suddenly are like, I'm gonna make a business out of social media and get this number of followers and this amount of money, I think you're gonna be very disappointed and it's gonna be very hard to get to where you wanna be if your first priority is not providing people with good quality content. I promise you that the most successful people that you follow online, that probably is not their main concern. 
it's what value they're providing to people. Okay, tinted lip balms that aren't too glossy and have good colors. Um, I would check out the milk makeup ones. Uh, they're like lip balms. Uh, I like the one called Canatonic. And then um, Colourpop have some nice ones. They're like crayon ones. I can't remember what they're called. Just a tint, I think. Drawing a blank. But those two, for sure, are ones that I like. This one is short and sweet, so I can't really give a whole lot in return. But they've said mental health, especially self-sabotage. This, um... <sighs> I haven't figured this out, but a really good book that I enjoy for this or when you are kind of cycling in your head or telling yourself certain things, a really good book is How to Tame Your Gremlin. Is that what it's called? How to Tame Your Gremlin? I'll link it for you below, but it's it was a really good way for me to notice what I was doing in that cycling in my head. Often just noticing that cycle helps to break it, so definitely check out that book. Someone said, how do I stop eating like crap? I try really hard not to refer to any foods as bad or crappy or... <sighs> I'm sure I do still slip up at times, but that is something I'm trying not to do. Especially now, we're probably gonna eat a bit different. We're probably gonna, our bodies might change as a result. And I just, again, I think accepting that and trying to make small changes if you can, if you want to, if not, then just kind of coming to terms with the fact that things are going to be different for a while. I also think it's hard when you're trying not to go to the grocery store as often. You're often like, well, maybe I can just make one more meal out of this random selection of things I have. Um, and it doesn't always end up being the healthiest. Um, so obviously preparing ahead, trying to make sure you have a lot of the basics, a lot of the fresh things, that can help. Um, but also stop having this idea of good and bad foods and Maybe focus on how the foods make you feel. If eating fries makes you feel better in some way, just eat the fries. But um, yeah, that's probably more than you wanted. Okay, let's do this as the last one. Keeping older skin exfoliated without harsh chemicals. Um, my recommendation for any kind of exfoliation for any age of skin would always be chemical exfoliants. I think that they are the best um, because they're going to break down any dead skin and improve cell turnover um, but they're not going to give you that harsh scrub or micro tears or whatever whatever it's called it's hard to know what you mean by that harsh chemicals because anything that's going to exfoliate your skin is probably what you're going to class as being harsh in some way there are uh, chemical exfoliants which use fruit enzymes to break things down which you might want to look into uh, Petit Bois is a great place to look for products like that um, but I would say to use something with like glycolic acid maybe or lactic acid my camera cut out again alpha hydroxy acids look for fruit enzymes I think that would be the best bet uh, for your needs Okay guys, and then that is it, I think, for this video. Actually, I tell a lie. If you do have any other questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. I'm trying to be a bit more active again now. Um, I did always keep up on comments um, and that, but at the beginning of lockdown, I just, I had too much going on in my head and I didn't have the mental capacity to deal with. Additionally, having other people struggling in the comments and being mean or taken out on me. I did not have the mental capacity. That's why I wasn't so active uh, on social media. I'm feeling much better now. Uh, so do go ahead and leave any additional questions or topics that you wanna chat about in the comments. Um, I will try and link you to everything I mentioned in the description box, but if there's anything missing, do go ahead and let me know. Um, please give this a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.